Uh, good evening, and uh, welcome to the first class of Astronomy 101 at Starfleet Academy, which is now in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, you know, San Francisco got boring and they decided they had to move here to the much better place. My name is Dr. Strangelove, Bartholomew Strangelove II, and I will be your chief lecturer this evening. Uh, this evening we are um, going to learn more about the night sky, and we have some guests. But uh, as you know, in the recent Dominion War, we lost a lot of fine, good officers. And you are the cream of the crop, you've been chosen to come in here and uh, take over their place. However, um, uh, before you can do that, uh, you have to find out about where you're going to be in space when you go there. You have to learn a little bit about what's up there. What is a globular cluster? What is a nebula? What's a galaxy? That sort of thing. So this is what this class is all about. Now, uh, we're very fortunate uh, in that we have some three guests who are coming. And they'll be on in a minute. But uh, when we start this class, what you're going to do is I'm going to uh, learn. About, you're going to learn about uh, what a galaxy is. I'll tell you a bit about that, um, and then I'm going to tell you how to find two of the uh, empires that are most important uh, to the Federation to know about. Uh, then I'll have my three guests come, and um, they are going to cover three of the other uh, empires, and then I'm going to finish with the United Federation of Planets, talking to you about that. First of all. Um, how many people here sort of have a rough idea of what a galaxy is? Oh, very good. You are truly a smart bunch of people with the right kind of people. Another simple question. Um, how many of you were actually born off Earth? <laughs> hey, very good. <laughs> uh, if you don't mind me asking, what planet are you from? Mars. Uh, Mars. Oh, thank you very much. Well, I'm... Um, Gallifrey. Gallifrey. Oh, Gallifrey. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Any other guests? I was born on the original Earth. The original Earth. <laughs> 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 oh, <we're laughs> what we're starting with is galaxies. Because what a lot of people don't realize is uh, all of the star... The Federation of, of Planets history occurs in one galaxy, not in a galaxy far, far away, you see? <laughs> and, uh, so what is a galaxy? A galaxy uh, usually has a bright core full of billions of stars, and it has arms of stars coming out. Now, there could be anywhere from uh, several million stars up to two or three hundred billion stars in a galaxy. This particular galaxy is not our galaxy because even today no spaceship has ever traveled far enough outside of our galaxy to be able to take a picture like that. So this is a picture of our nearest neighbor galaxy, Andromeda. Now, can we see that from the Earth? Well, when we look north in the summer, you, I hope you could just make out that the fact that the Milky Way is right here. You see a few more stars and looking north to see that, but again, we're looking out to the rim, so there's not much out there to see. Now when you look straight up, you begin to see uh, the shape of the Milky Way, and you can see the uh, clouds, dust clouds, that are up here. Now there are just as many stars here as there are here, it's just that all of that dust is obscuring the light. So, and you need dark skies, and the other thing you need is a moonless night, and then you can actually see the Milky Way like this, and you can see those dust lanes. Is this of interest to you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. I don't want to put you to sleep or anything. But... Yeah, that's good. Well, you know, you are cadets, and you know, you, you know, and it's a required class. So sometimes people, you know, they get a little sleepy during those sort of things. That's okay. What a lot of people don't realize is these little blocky circles here represent uh, the empires that are in our local area. So we have the Ferengi, the Cardassian, uh, the Romulan, and the Klingon empires, and we're in the middle. And this is our Milky Way. And so some scientists decide, well, we have to figure out how to describe this. And so they said, let's divide it into four quadrants. 
So they drew a line right through our sun, uh, right through the center of the galaxy, and straight off to the other side. And then they went through at right angles, through the center of the galaxy, and drew another line here. And then they labeled them the alpha, the beta, the delta, and the gamma quadrants. So we're down here. These are the quadrants. We'll talk more about these quadrants. But right now, let's look at the local area. There are several different maps and configurations that you can find for this. But um, this one seems to me to be the most accurate one. Um, can you read this back there? No. That's a joke. <laughs> what we have here is the Kardashian Empire in the orangey, dirty, browny color. Uh, up here is the Ferengi Alliance. It's so small you can hardly see it, but it's right in there. Uh, they, they're those pesky, oh I'm sorry, are there any Ferengi in the audience? <laughs> those pesky people have a habit of sometimes you know, they, they, they wheel their way everywhere in the local uh, space, and uh, so even though they're a small alliance, they, they tend to uh, be everywhere, so that's why we pay attention to them. Then there's the Romulan Star Empire, and finally, not finally, but almost finally, the Klingon Empire, which seems to be of great interest to people, and then, of course, in the middle here, we have the United Federation of Planets. Commander Torith uh, is the commander of the Warbird, uh, Romulan Warbird Kazera. She uh, took on a superior number of Klingon warships and defeated them, and as a consequence won the uh, Satoric Citation. And so uh, I would like you to please give a warm welcome of applause for uh, <laughs> Commander Torith. Well, the first thing you have to do is 
learn to navigate in the night sky if you're going to find things. There is a big difference. All right. So, you know, it's, it's, once you see it's there, it's, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? So, now, the, we use the Big Dipper to find the North Star. <coughs> and what you do is you use the last two stars in the, the Dipper part, and it points almost directly to the, the nearest brightest star, which is right here. This is Polaris, the North Star. Now, I want you to watch what happens. Uh, these are some other constellations we'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, watch what happens as the Earth turns. As the Earth turns, you see the stars appear to be moving. But there is one star, what is it? Yeah, this one, which stays perfectly still. So as the Earth turns, it stays still. It's always in the same place. Then there's the burning question, where is Cardassia? And the reason we start with Cardassia is because we start in the summer nights. The Milky Way is visible in the summer, but it's also visible in the winter. And three empires are in the summer nights, and three are in the winter. Yeah. And so here's Cardassia over here, and we, our sun, Sol, is right here. And so we're looking off in that direction. Well, where is that in the sky? Well, here's where it is. If we look at this, we have this is, this is a W, and it's always above the horizon. Right now, it's as low as it goes. And it is Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia is the Queen Cassiopeia's throne, is actually what this W represents. We call that Cassiopeia. And up here, we have uh, Cygnus the Swan. And we're going to look more closely at this in a, in a minute. But it has wings. This is the tail. And it has a long neck. And this is the beak up here. So that signals the swan. And Cardassia stretches along the Milky Way. Now remember, all these empires are in the Milky Way. So we've got to look in the Milky Way to find them. And here we have Cardassia. So we know it stretches all the way from here to here. This is where the Ferengi Alliance is. So if you're looking up into space, you find the signals sw the swan. You look at the head, which is Alberio, and you are looking at the Ferengi Alliance. We are very fortunate to have uh, a, a personage here on Earth uh, that uh, is very knowledgeable about a, the largest empire that exists in our galaxy. And I've been very fortunate to be able to convince the authorities to allow her to come and visit with us. So ladies and gentlemen, we have here the uh, leader of the Dominion, and uh, <laughs> she, uh, she has agreed to come, let herself be let out of prison, to come here and talk to us uh, uh, about her Dominion. So she is the leader of the largest uh, empire in the galaxy, so you have to give her a reasonable amount of respect. And so, therefore, I would like you to all stand, please. Would you please stand and give her a standing ovation, a welcome that she deserves. Here she comes. of the Federation, the Romulans, and the Klingons. Why has she been allowed to out of prison? She's still powerful and dangerous. It's an outrage. We demand your respect. Do not laugh at me again. There could be agents of the Founder in this very audience. Changelings ah. in human form. Indeed. Our guest here is going to uh, I'll tell you where the Dominion is, and... Help me down, please. <laughs> Be careful.
ability in ascribing to a human form, you're looking positively terrible. <laughs> well, now that Odo has joined us, I no longer have to have a face similar to his. What a dominion. Let me tell you about the dominion. Our dominion is 10,000 light years wide. Ten times wider than any of your local empires. You cannot even see our stars from Earth. Even at warp 9.6, it would take you decades to reach us. If it had not been for that unfortunate wormhole, you would never have found us. It allowed you to travel very far, very fast. On a historical note, Around 2015, some of you may be familiar with that time, scientists did not even believe that wormholes existed. Can you imagine? But we didn't want you to find us. No, but as the Romulan has said, your incredible thirst for exploration soon would lead to colonization, and he was right. We had to prepare for war, and so we did. The Dominion is located in the Gamma Quadrant. Now, to find the Dominion, you need first to find the center of the galaxy. Well, these humans have devised all manner of ways to look at the sky, and they have a constellation they call Sagittarius, <coughs> or the teapot. Do you see the teapot? No? Well, let me help you. Here, outside, is a teapot. The stars of the teapot. What about now? There, the star is the teapot. Here's its handle, here's its spout. <laughs>
Um, and now uh, we will call upon Commander Kalua to tell us where the Klingon Empire is. You! I see that you are dishonoring me. Did you fancy a battle to the death for your dishonor? Continue to keep disrespecting this assembly? <clears throat> well, ours is another empire that you cannot see visibly from here in Halifax. However, as you see on this map here, instead you see a cloud that looks very faint but is in fact containing thousands of stars and in fact our Klingon Empire is a thousand glorious light years wide. And of course, three of the stars that you can see most well in the night sky from here is Orion's Belt, three stars, and if you go down to the left of that belt, of course, you can not only see Sirius, you can see the foot star and his left shoulder star, and from there, the, Klingon, the war club of the hunter. Going down to the southwest, almost due south of the shoulder star is the star of Sirius. You should know that the Klingon Empire was founded in the ninth century of your Terran years by Kalis the Unforgettable. I would like our honorable guest, a Commander Torf, to come up and tell us about the Romulan. Our glorious empire is even older than the Klingon Empire, founded in the 5th century in your Terran marking of time. When you look up into your skies, you will see the Romulan Empire takes up over three quarters of your winter night sky. You will see the Klingon Empire starting down to the star Sirius, mentioned by the commander. And our empire starts and moves south from that point. You cannot see all of the Romulan Empire from your <coughs> Terran town of Halifax because the Romulan Empire, being so great, has extends, extends far below your sight line into the south, as you will see. Sirius, again separating or marking the separation between the Klingon Empire and the Rom Romulan Empire, which extends all the way down to a star below your southern horizon, Alpha Centauri in the constellation Centurus. We have 183 planets that are part of the Federation, but there are over 7,000 settlements out there uh, that are also uh, occupied, where the planets are occupied, that are in, in our space. And even when you look at the Milky Way like this, you see these clouds here? Those are billions of stars, and we can't distinguish one from the next. But covering this whole photograph is Another uh, are all these small spots, and those are stars. And all of those stars are in our federation. So, and what are you doing, Commander? I have just received information that a Breen ship has entered Federation space. Breen? Yes. And could at any time come within transporter range. Yes, your prisons are designed not to allow for transporter, but we have a prisoner not in your prison. Oh, I've been studying your cadets, and I think we should run a test to see who is Karen and who is not. Yes, indeed, they must be verified. <laughs> they 
They will do. <laughs> and, and what is your plan? Indeed. This does give me an idea. Mm -hmm. There should be a very strict, stringent test to make sure who might be a changeling in this assembly. There should be a test of knowledge. The cadets will lead you, these two cadets will lead you in answering questions around the stars in the sky. <laughs> I will be watching to make sure you are all participating in the answering of these questions. Surely a test of your knowledge and memory should merit whether or not you are who you say you are. Mm. How about it? The professor has also chosen C. The answer? Hmm. Another question. The United Federation of Planets is everywhere you look in the night sky, as I heard someone point out earlier, <laughs> hidden behind the Milky Way's dust clouds or only to be seen in your Terran Southern Hemisphere night sky. Up, 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 up. <laughs> All that. No, you can answer. Hey. Hey. Lingon Empire is only seen in the summer sky or stretches from Orion's Club to Sirius, the brightest star in your northern sky, or can be seen in the depths of Orion's Nebula. B. 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 Interesting. And? Our professor disagrees with you in a selected A. What is this? And the correct answer is B. <laughs> B. Interesting. The professor does not know this. Yeah, about the Klingon Empire. Next question. We continue. The Romulan Star Empire takes up a very small section of the Milky Way, can be seen from your Terran city, stretches from the star Sirius to the star Alpha Centauri below, below the southern horizon. skies more importantly 
you have assisted us in thwarting a prison break of the founder. For this, you deserve our respect. Indeed, you have shown yourselves worthy of honor, perhaps even to be Starfleet officers. Indeed, you are not as spineless as some of us in the Klingon Empire would have you see. So, until we meet on the field of battle, Kos Fuedam, Ida Wada, Kabla, Kabla, Class dismissed. Thank you, so <laughs>